Good morning. Welcome to Calvary Chapel Inland to our Debo 30. I'm Pastor Ruben. Thank you for joining us today. We stream live on Facebook every Monday, Wednesdays, and Fridays at 9 a.m. here at the church. If you're in the neighborhood and you'd like to join us here as these good people are here this morning, you can come on out to 5383 Martin Street in Harupa Valley. And today we are going to finish up the book of Ephesians. We'll be in chapter 6. So let's go ahead and grab your Bibles, a pen, a cup of coffee, highlighter, and uh, let's mark up our word. Let's pray. Father God in heaven, we come before you, Lord, this morning on this Monday, Father, and we, Lord, come before you with empty hands because we can't fill them, Lord. We can't do a thing to help ourselves, Father. We truly do need you, Lord, completely, 100%, Father. And Lord, as we surrender our lives to you, Father, knowing that you have everything in control, we want to just relinquish every thought that holds us in captivity, Father. Every selfish act, Lord, that keeps us from receiving healing, Lord, in our lives. We pray, Lord, that this day would be a day of, of liberty, Lord, in Christ Jesus, knowing that you have everything in control. Yes, Lord. And we can put our faith and our trust in you, Lord. And that is very difficult to do, Father. And so we need you to even do that, Lord. It reminds me of that man who brought his son who was demon-possessed to the Lord. And, and he asked Jesus to do something. And Jesus says, you have to have faith. And he says, I have faith, but help my unbelief. Though he had faith, he still had some unbelief, Lord. And that's the area, Lord, that I think all of us uh, struggle with from time to yes, time, God. Lord. But we just have unbelief, Lord. We don't know if you're going to do something. We don't know how you're going to do it. We don't know if you want to do it at times. And sometimes, Lord, we feel like maybe we're not worthy for you to do it. And so, Lord, forgive us of having that attitude, Lord. Help us to be positive, to have faith, to trust in you. Because without faith, we're unable to please you, Lord. And so, Father, minister to us today, Lord, as we finish up the book of Ephesians. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 Good morning, everyone. Glad you guys are all on here. Patty, good morning. Uh, Dina, good morning. Uh, Randy, you're watching. Good morning. Uh, Dita, I can't pronounce her name. <laughs> Nelson, good morning. I'm laughing. Christina, good morning. So let's turn our Bibles to Ephesians uh, chapter 6 and um, get started here. Um uh, as you remember, chapters 1, 2, 3, we're dealing with what God has done for the Ephesian church. And for us, chapters 4 through 6 deal with what we should be doing for the Lord. So we have a responsibility. It's a co-venture of faith with God. He has his responsibility, what he has done. He has, he has justified us through the blood of Jesus Christ. It's set, it's done by grace, and it's through our faith. And so there's the co-laboring co co together. Uh, Jesus did the work. We need to have the faith. And as Justin Alfred has described it so well, it's like Jesus making a barbecue, cooking the steak and the potatoes, cutting it up, putting it on a fork, and putting it right to your mouth, and now you just have to chew it. And he's done it all, and we just have to receive it by faith. And so these last chapters are challenging because uh, uh, they describe what we have to do for the Lord. And especially these last two chapters, five and six, describe our relationships with our spouses and our families and so forth. And so we're going to get into children and how we ought to treat children here in the first few verses of chapter six. So let's look at chapter six. Children, obey your parents in the Lord, for this is right. Now, what's, what's the age group here that Paul is talking about? Well, obviously, they're parents and they're children. So the children are under the head of the parents. So this is an age uh, where the parents are still in, responsible for their children. And, and so I don't know what it was at that time. It may have been younger just because of the culture. Today, it's 18, right? The parents are responsible for their children uh, until 18 now, in some cases, it's a little bit more, like with insurance. Uh, we know that children can have insurance all the way up to 24, I believe it is, under the parents' insurance. And so there are some um, 
benefits of still being under your own household if you're going to college and things like that. But these are children who are to obey their parents. What are they supposed to obey them in? And everything? Yes, everything, unless it's going to be contrary to the scriptures. There has to be um, an understanding that obedience is important to the Lord. If you're obedient to your parents, then you can be obedient to the Lord. If you're obedient to the Lord, then you can be obedient to the laws, to, to our governments, to those in, in leadership. Um, obedience is important uh, for ministry, especially, and in families, definitely. Uh, you have to have obedience of your children. You can't be a child that's rebellious. The Old Testament had laws concerning that. Um, the obedience of children keeps the family running smoothly. And if every child was just obedient to the Lord and trusted in God, the families would run a lot more smoothly. What happens is, is that, that we have this idea that we know better than our parents as children, and so we think that we ought to do it our way. And oftentimes, it's, they're not always right. Now, in some cases, and, and you know this because it happens, where a parent makes a decision and a child goes, I don't like that decision, doesn't sound right, sounds like it's going to be difficult or there's going to be some problems with it, and sometimes there is, right? Sometimes there is. Sometimes a kid's right, you know? Believe it or not, but sometimes that kid <laughs> is right, you know? But it doesn't mean that he shouldn't be obedient to you. You need to let the Lord take care of the parents. They're still the parents. And even though uh, you disagree with them, you're obedient to them. You don't have to feel it. That's your responsibility to be obedient to, to your parents. Um, but by nature, aren't we rebellious? We don't like obedience. Yeah. We don't follow the laws and so forth. I had someone years ago come in and say say to me that uh, I want to serve under you and everything that you ask, we're going to just say yes. Now that only lasts so long. I mean, the the heart was there, the intent was there, but as as they said this, I'm like, you don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> of course, I kept that to myself, you know. It's only going to last so long because that's just impossible to do is just say yes to everything. There's going to come a point where you're going to say, no, I can't do it. You know, and unfortunately, that's what happened. No, I can't do it. And then it ran into a lot of other problems. But the Bible does say that children are to obey their parents in that relationship. Honor your father and mother, which is the first commandment with promise that it may be well with you and you may live long. So that's the promise is that if you honor your parents, you'll live long. That doesn't mean that God's looking for an opportunity to snuff you out. You know, as soon as you dishonor your parents, uh, there's just complications with it in all kinds of ways because sin always brings death. That's the wages of sin. So even in this relationship, now, honoring your parents uh, doesn't have an age limit. It's continually, even at the age of 57, I'm still trying to honor my parent, my mom, who was living with me. And that can be difficult to do, but I am really trying to, to honor her. Uh, take care of her, watch over her, even if she doesn't want me to, you know, from time to time. Uh, we had a neat little situation at the at the airport when we went to El Paso because she still wants to be independent. She's her own person, you know. She, she doesn't want to feel like she's confined and she's doing something that I'm telling her, you know, to do. And so when we were at the airport, um, I asked her to pull out her, her ticket because we were getting ready to go on the plane. And I says, you know where it's at? She goes, yeah, it's in my bag there. I says, no, mom, it's in your purse, and I got your purse in my bag. And she goes, no, I put it in my bag. I'm like, okay, mom, well, can you look? And she's looking, and she goes, I don't, I don't see it. And she didn't look very hard. She just kind of, you know, because she's right. She knows where it's at. So I pulled out the bag, and I, I laid it by her. I said, here. And she goes, don't you be throwing things at me. <laughs> and I'm like, I didn't throw things. And we're in the middle of the airport. I go, I didn't throw it at you. I laid it by your side so you can look at it. So she's now opening her purse and looking inside there. I grabbed her bag and I looked inside, moved a couple things. There's her ticket. And so she's done. I go, is it there? She goes, no, I can't find it. And I go, because it's right here, Mom. I reached in and, and she grabs it. See, we found it anyway. You know, that's what she said. We found it anyway. So it's just like, okay. So I'm trying to honor her, but at the same time take care of her. And that's a hard thing to do. And so now, we're, now we've got this attitude, right? Because we're both like ah, a little frustrated. And so at the second stop, the layover in Phoenix, we 
we're getting ready to go on to the into the second plane and I noticed that I had two tickets she's got two tickets the top one was for the first flight and the second one's for the second so I realized that the top one is no good anymore so I flipped it over got mine ready and I go mom you need to flip your ticket over and use the second one she goes I know what I'm doing don't tell me what to do <laughs> And I'm like, okay, so the attitude is still there, right? And so we get up to the, the counter, and they scan my ticket. I walk right in. They scan hers, and she just starts to walk in. And all of a sudden, the guy goes, oh, man, man, come back here. It didn't work. It didn't work. Get back here. You know, and so I said, I tried to tell her. <laughs> and he flipped the ticket. He goes, okay, now you're good. I go, see, Mom, I'm just trying to help. And she goes, you don't have to help me for nothing. <laughs> It can be difficult. You have, you know, uh, love covers a multitude of sins. And, and so you just have to overlook that, you know. Uh, but it, it's hard to honor your parents when, they're, when they have their own mind, their own thoughts, their own way of doing things. But the Bible still says you're to honor them. Whether they're right or wrong, you're still to honor them because they're your parents. And it's a reflection of, of how we honor God. It really is. Everything that we do in our relationships with our husbands and wives, whether it's our children or whether it's one another, is a reflection of our God. It really is. It speaks about our relationship with God. And if we can't honor our parents, how are we going to honor God? These are earthly people, and yet God is God Almighty. Amen. And we can't honor Him. So that's the challenge for us, is to honor uh, them. Then he goes on, You fathers, do not provoke your children to wrath but bring them up in the training and admonition of the Lord. So there's our responsibility, is that we are to train up our children in the way of the Lord. And that's a responsibility that people don't take anymore, especially those who have children, right? They just think, well, no, let them grow up on their own, make their own decision. No, you have a responsibility to pour into them the truth. What's the truth? The Word of God. Yes. Now, give you an example of this in my own life, uh, I trained up my boys in the way of the Lord. Uh, I read to them every night. We prayed every night. Uh, we sought the Lord together in church. We served together in church. If I was at church, they were at church. If I was involved in men's uh, study, they were with me, even though they were little. And so I made sure that they were involved, they were plugged in, and they were with me, and we did things together. We also did uh, vacations together. They went with us and we enjoyed life together. And so it was, a, it, was, it was a time of training them in the Lord. Now there were times when I kind of get on them because I have this morbid personality that, that sometimes like to pick at my, my little uh, boys or my grandchildren at time and sometimes I frustrate them. And I remember my wife saying, you're, you're bringing them to wrath because they get frustrated and they start getting angry. <laughs> and then I remember one time Roman... Roman said, Dad, don't convince me to anger. Because you know? <laughs> he was getting a little upset at me. So uh, that is our responsibility as parents, is don't, don't bring them to a point of wrath, but explain to them what is going on. Train them up in the Lord. Then he goes on and talks about servants, or you can apply this to employees. Uh, servants or employees, be obedient to those who are your masters, according to the flesh, with fear and trembling and sincerity of heart. As to Christ, uh, not with eye service as men pleasers, but as servants of Christ, doing the will of God from the heart, with good will doing service as to the Lord and not to men, knowing that whatever good anyone does, he will, be, he will receive the same from the Lord, whether he is a slave or free. So again, being obedient to your master to your employer, just do your job. That's not hard. Just do your job and don't do it grudgingly. You're getting paid every week to do your job. That's your responsibility. Uh, and so you need to do that. If, you're, if you've got hired to do a certain task, then you need to do that task. Whether you like it or not, it doesn't matter what you like or not like. You have a job to do, so do it. Even if it's making a small little piece, then make that small little piece if it means a million times a day. You know, I know that might get a little boring, but that's what you do. And at the end of the week, you get a paycheck for what you do. That's the agreement. You, you made a promise to do so, and you need to do that. And if you have an attitude, then you need to correct that yourself. But you need to be obedient to your employers. You need to help them succeed, and then they'll help you. We should be, as Christians, uh, uh, great employees. Our employers should look at us and be able to trust us and so forth. So 
God is saying here that it's more than just serving them. You're serving God. Paul said, do all things unto the Lord. And when I worked for Southern California Edison, uh, we got good money. <laughs> we got good money. And, and every year, we usually got at least 3.5% to 4% raise every year. Um, so every year, sure enough, uh, you hear the guys, I was a union steward, they'd come to me and say, I think this is unfair. And it was little petty things, you know? And I thought, what's so unfair about it? What's the big deal? Just, you get great money. You get to go on vacations. You got stock options. You got hundreds of thousands of dollars in your 401k. What are you worried? <laughs> Just do your job, you know? And then they end up getting caught sleeping on the job or doing something they shouldn't be doing, you know? Uh, that's not how Christians should be. They should be working hard uh, for their... Um, employers and not just to please them but to please God uh, that's a requirement of the Lord he wants us to do that to reflect his very nature he worked seven days and then he rested on the Sabbath day now he goes on and says in verse 10 finally my brethren be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might be strong in the Lord and the power of his might so two things here strong and power and who's it in the Lord and his might. Is it our might? Is it our power? No. This is something I'm learning, especially in these last few years. I'm learning this, that it's not in my power and it's not in my might. I have no control over these things. I have to learn to go through these situations. And sometimes you go through situations so that you can minister to others. The things that you have been comforted by the Lord, you comfort others. Randy and I, when we were at the pastor's conference, there was a time on, I believe, Wednesday night where we were able to uh, have an afterglow and then pray for one another. And, and Brian said, I want you just to stand up if you need prayer. And so a few people stood up. Then he asked those that were around those people to lay hands on them and pray for them. So there was a couple that stood up. And so me, Justin, and, and Randy went over and we, Justin, prayed for them. And, and then I prayed for her. Uh, this person, the wife of this man. And when I walked up to her and I could feel her pain, I could see it on her face. She was standing there with a blank look, like there's nothing there. She could not feel, she could not see anything around her but what was taking place in her body. I mean, that's how blank, and I felt it, and the Lord just gave me that discernment. And so I immediately touched her. And by the way, uh, the husband said, please don't put your hand on her because she can't take the weight. I know this sounds funny, but she can't take the weight of your hand even being on her body because she's in constant pain. And, and so I took my hand and I laid it like this on her, on her shoulder. I'm not touching her, but laid it like that. And then I started praying and I started crying because I, I just immediately said, Lord, I feel her pain right now. I know what she's going through. And I started listing all the feelings, you know, the hopelessness, the worries, the cares. When is this going to be over? Where are you at, God? Why am I going? All these things, that little pity party that we throw, you know, and you might think that's, you're justifiable. You're going through all this pain and suffering, you know, and she's explained it afterwards how she's in pain 24 seven. She just can't get around it. And yet he's struggling because he wants to be there for her and he's got to work. He's got ministry and and so forth. And so I was able to share with them what I went through, you know, with my pain of falling down and dealing with it for the past eight, nine years now. <clears throat> and they, the Lord was able to comfort them with what I learned in my pain. And you could see that in her continence, she kind of, kind of, uh, was encouraged a little bit, you know, and yet still she was very tired and she was ready to go home. She's like, I'm just waiting for the Lord to just come and take us home. You know, but the pain that's there, very hard to deal with. I don't know how anyone can deal with it, but you got to deal with it. I couldn't be there for her 24-7. Though my heart and my spirit understands completely, <clears throat> they have to go through that. And they have to make the Lord their power and their strength. It's only Him, as He says here, and no one else that can do that for them. The strength comes from the Lord, and it, the power comes from God, and it comes from us seeking Him every single day with all our worries, with all our cares, with all our doubts, saying, Lord, I just need you right now. I don't know how you're gonna get me through this, but you need to help me. And somehow get in that fellowship, somehow uh, keep faithful to the things that God is doing. Um, it might be hard, you might feel like a hypocrite, 
but you're not because you're trying to gain that power and strength from the Lord. You can't do it, guys. You can't do it. You can't have the right attitude. You can't say the right words. You can't do the right things. We're all idiots. You know, we're all idiots and we all fail. So we have to depend on Christ and find our hope in him and him alone. He is our everything. So then he says, do this, put on the whole armor of God that you may be able to stand against the whales or the schemes of the devil. And believe me, there's a lot of schemes that are being processed against us every single day. He knows exactly how we tick and he's going to tick us off any way that he can. And so we need to understand that it's a battle. It's a warfare. One of the guys talked about that. He says, you're in a warfare. And he's talking to pastors now, remember this. And he says, you guys are in a warfare. You all signed up and knowing what you got involved. You went to his camp and you said, let's fight. And now that he punches you in the face, you want to lay down and do nothing? No, you're in a fight. Get your butt back up, punch back. <laughs> don't, let, don't let him stop you because you're in a warfare. And that enemy doesn't want to stop. He's going to come at you. But we get back up. We know what we signed up for. And this is a long haul. And you have to be ready for it. A boxer doesn't get hit in the face one time and says, I quit. I'm out of here. See you later. No, he boxes and he keeps boxing. And he gets punched in the face several times. And he'll get punched again and again. But he's going to give some punches back too. You know, because you're in a warfare against the enemy. So you need to understand that. And, and we need to understand the armor of God and how we battle against the enemy. His schemes don't change. They're, they're always the same. And we know them because we've seen how he works in scriptures. We see how he works with us today. And it's always the same plan. Uh, he'll use people against us. You know, it's amazing how I'll get attacked from someone. And I remember that happening the first time. thinking, man, that guy really doesn't like me. And so having to deal with that relation, finally they leave. And then someone else attacks me the same way. And I'm like, that guy doesn't like me either. You don't have to deal with that. Then I started realizing it's the same attacks, but different faces every so often. And I started realizing, wow, that's the enemy. It's, it's not the individual. They're being used by the enemy, but it's the same tactics, the same attacks. So that means the enemy is the one that doesn't like me. And so I've learned to say, Oh, God bless you. You know, I love you. I know the enemy's just trying to get me so I can now receive it, you know, without being offended by it. I understand that it's them and their naiveness and what God is or what the enemy is doing through them. And so it helps me now to deal with it a lot easier. So what do we do? Put on the full armor of God that you may stand against the wells of the devil. For we do not wrestle against flesh and blood. First thing, we don't wrestle against flesh and blood. And but against principalities, against power, we battle each other. We don't battle each other at all. So get that into our head. It's the spiritual warfare that is going on in the heavenly places. Take up the whole armor of God that you may be able to withstand in the evil day and having done all to stand. Stand therefore, having girded your waist with truth, that is the word of God. Having put on the breastplate of righteousness, that's Jesus Christ. Having shod your feet with the preparation of the gospel of peace, that is the gospel, the hope that we have in Jesus. Above all, taking the shield of faith, which you will be able to quench the fiery darts of the wicked one. Our faith in God is what quenches that. We're going to trust in God, even though they're, they're not going to stop the darts from coming, but that shield of faith will stop them from hitting you and affecting you. So it's the shield of faith. And taking the helmet of salvation and the sword of the spirit, which is the word of God. Now this is the armor that we're to wear. And we need to put it on every day. Our prayer should be every morning, Lord, equip me for battle. Let me put my suit on. Get my helmet on, get my sword, get my shield, get my shoes on, Lord. Gird myself in righteousness, Lord God. I'm ready for battle, Lord. Whatever you have, I'm gonna battle with you. I'm gonna battle with you. You remember Joshua came up to an angel. Uh, you remember that story after battling and Joshua came up to this warrior, this commander, this angel, and he said, whose side are you on? You remember that story? And the angel said, I'm on neither side. Isn't that interesting? I never read that before. Uh, Joshua, whose side are you on? Are you for the enemy or are you for us? And he says, I'm for neither side. I'm an angel of the Lord. I'm for the Lord's side. <laughs> that says a lot, doesn't it? Yeah. He's not for the enemy. 
He's not for you because you're a knucklehead just like the enemy. <laughs> I'm for my side. I'm for the Lord. And it's what the Lord wants to do. So either you get on my side or you stay on your side and try to battle this war without me. So we need to get on the Lord's side to battle against the enemy. Then he closes here, praying always with all prayer and supplication in the spirit, being watchful to this end with all perseverance, all supplication for all the saints. Is that easy to no. persevere? No, it's not. It's very difficult. But we need to keep praying and praying and praying and crying and crying, right? Just like the woman who came to the judge. I, I need a judgment. You need to do something. Finally, the judge says, I'm just so tired of you coming before the court. I'm going to give you your request. We need to do that with Jesus. You know, like the, like the person that came to the baker. You know, I need some food. I have company. Come on, get down here. And the, no, I'm asleep. It's the door is closed. No, I need something right now. No, I, I can't help you. No, I need something. Just, all right, I'll give you it to you so you can leave me alone. And we need to be persistent in our prayers to the Lord and supplications for the saints. For to me, that utterance may be given to me that I may open my mouth boldly uh, to make known the mysteries of the gospel. And so Paul is saying here, for myself, just pray that I will continue to preach the gospel for which I am an ambassador in chains that in it I may speak boldly as I ought to speak, but that you also may know my affairs and how I am doing. Tychus, <clears throat> my beloved brother, faithful minister to the Lord, will make all things known to you whom I have set, <clears throat> sent to you for this very purpose that you may know our affairs and that you or that he may comfort your hearts, peace to the brethren, and love with faith that God the Father and the Lord Jesus Christ, grace be with all those who love our Lord Jesus Christ in sincerity. I love him adding that little word, sincerity. Because there are people who say, I love the Lord, but it's not in sincerity. Mm -hmm. They have a motive. <clears throat> Our relationship with the Lord is always based upon sincerity. That means being right in the heart. <clears throat> right in the heart. That's what a relationship is about. It's a heart thing, not a religious thing. <clears throat> a religious thing is just works on the external and not on the internal. I pray that today that we will surrender our lives again to Jesus and just say, Lord, I am yours. I was bought with the price. You are the one with the power and the strength that I need. And so I come to you asking you, Lord, to just fill me and strengthen me to endure the battles against the enemy. Give me hope and give me strength today. Let's pray. Father God in heaven, may your Holy Spirit, Lord, bring your word of truth, Father. And may it come to fruitation in our lives, Lord, that we would truly believe it, Lord. I know sometimes we think this is not for me, God wasn't speaking to me, but he is. He's speaking to all of us. And what he says, he means. And it's true. And it's not a lie. And we need to believe it. Because victory is coming. And we need to put our hope in him. Help us today, Lord, as we begin this week. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. God bless you. Thank you for joining us. Uh, hopefully we'll see you on Wednesday as we continue on through the book of Philemon. Or no, Philip's. Uh, uh, yeah. Not Philemon, but uh, Philippians. And we'll start with chapter one. Have a wonderful day, and we'll see you then. God bless you.